Hello and uh, good morning everyone and thank you for registering and uh, connecting to this webinar. Uh, for those who don't know me, I'm uh, Peter Howarth. Uh, I'm the sales manager for special accounts at AQ. I'm also the uh, business coordinator for our US office. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you for attending, of course, uh, but also we want to um, to uh, to say that uh, we are affected by this confinement and the confinement policies that are globally uh, hitting us now with uh, this terrible pandemic. So uh, in first place, uh, our thoughts are with all the victims, their families and all the people that are suffering uh, this terrible pandemic in one way or another. Okay, without any further delay, I will continue with presenting uh, the people that are accompanying me here today uh, during this webinar. Um, first of all, I want to introduce to you Roberto Tejero, who's our product manager, and he's also in charge of our customer training. Roberto will explain to us the virtual applications and uh, how we can connect uh, the radio station remotely from our homes through a standard internet connection. So, uh, hello, good morning to you, Roberto. Hello, Peter and everybody. Uh, good morning. Okay, and then uh, with us today also, we have uh, Sergio Sanchez. Sergio Sanchez is our, uh, an R&D engineer from, from AQ, and he will help us to answer questions and ask concerning how to uh, move, for example, audio contribution uh, from your home to the studio and vice versa, and also to to be able to connect your microphones through audio codecs and such. Welcome, Sergio. Thanks, Peter. Hi, everyone. And last, but obviously not least, we have Antonio Perez with us. Uh, Antonio is uh, our sales manager for the Asia Pacific region, and he has uh, many, many years of experience in. Uh, in offering solutions to our customers. Antonio will go through uh, one of the vital parts uh, for, for our radio production, and that's telephone systems and talk show systems, and how to operate those systems remotely from, from your homes. Hello, good morning, Antonio. Good morning, Peter. Good morning to our friends uh, attending us from Asia and Pacific and all the areas. Thank you very much. All right, and before, just, just a little bit of housekeeping before we start. Uh, you're all welcome to make uh, questions uh, to us during uh, the presentation. Uh, you will be able to do that, or you can do that in the area that are uh, marked up as question in the webinar too. Now, we won't answer those questions until we finish uh, the presentations. And um, we will see how many, if we can answer all the questions, it all depends on the time that we have available to answer questions and, and doubts. Uh, in any event, um, there's also uh, one last thing, but I will repeat that at the end of the presentation as well, and that is that when you leave the webinar at some point, you will have um, uh, available to you a, 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 small t a small inquiry that we want you to fill in, and this will help us to improve our webinars and our services uh, in the future. Thank you. Okay, in that case, what I will do then is to continue uh, the presentation. And uh, I will go uh, into a bit of a history of uh, AEQ and uh, and um, and our company. Well, AEQ, as you some of you know, uh, we've been existing for over 40 years, and uh, we've been doing uh, audio equipment and video equipment for for the broadcasting industry for for all these all these years. Uh, the range of products um, are, of course, uh, audio products principally, but we also do some broadcast video uh, monitor products. We do commentary systems, uh, commentator systems. Uh, we also do audio storage and automation and uh, and anything that has to do with uh, communications, in, in essence. Um, just uh, if you don't know this, but uh, I think it's of interest because we've been present at all the major international sporting events uh, since uh, around 1988, where we first started uh, the, this adventure. And um, until today, we, we are present at all the major sporting events, including the, the Summer and Winter Olympics, uh, where we uh, produce uh, or are vital in, in, in providing the equipment that is necessary to produce the, the uh, commentary audio and uh, the audio contribution circuits. Uh, we have our headquarters in Madrid, and uh, we have been uh, 
being focused on international sales, we have had uh, since uh, 1993. We've have uh, we have our offices in in the United States, Mexico, Portugal, and and also India. Anyway, the the objective of this webinar was basically to at a critical moment like this, we wanted to be able to show you customers and friends and the industry in general how it's pretty easy to find solutions allowing you to continue your service with relative normality from your homes. So we will basically focus on um, making this a very simple and straightforward uh, presentation in that sense. Okay. Now, as you all know, we have um, we have uh, certain elements that we need to um, to uh, to produce radio, and the first, I mean, all of them are important in the in the combination, of course, in the conjunction. But uh, if we start from from uh, from the uh, left uh, corner up here, we have the microphones. I mean, these are fundamental for your talents and guests your DJs, yourselves, to be heard and to be able to, to contribute uh, uh, with your voice on the radio. Uh, to, um, to the uh, right here, we have the, the uh, audio automation systems and the content management system. These are vital because this is basically containing all your possibilities of revenues in these times and, and in general. No? This is where you have all your your contents, uh, except the the live uh, the live ones and the ones that are spoken. Another very important element is, of course, your 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 audience and the way to get in touch with your audience and have them to be able to participate on air would be your broadcast phone-in systems or telephone systems and you know the standard uh, way of uh, having your audience to participate and also regular contributors to be able to participate in programs is normally through phones or, if they are well-equipped, audio codecs. The last uh, big, uh, let's say, element that we, we have a uh, need to, to run uh, would be our mixing consoles. Now, this piece of equipment is normally quite big and it's not so easy to bring home with us, uh, nor would, for example, the automation system be easy to bring home uh, uh, just like that. But we have uh, tools for this, and uh, we will show you these tools uh, uh, later on in the presentation. So we can control all the aspects of the console, and we can actually run the, all the features of the console from a remote location uh, within within our facility or from home. Okay. Now I'm going to go through uh, just a few examples of people that are already using. In, in this case, our equipment and, and the, the, the remote uh, connectivity and are being able to work from home. Um, the first one that we want to share with you would be the experience that we have, uh, or that Ser Guadix have in, in, uh, in Spain, uh, where we have uh, Rodrigo Poyatos, who is the director of, uh, technical director of the Ser Guadix. Uh, Ser Guadix or Guadix is a village or city in the south of Spain in the province of Granada. And Mr. Poyatos, the technical director, he actually lives in the province of Almeria, and he has, in round figures, one and a half hours driving time between his home and the station. Uh, as you can see in the in the station, um, he has a, a EQ forum console. He has had this uh, console, this console, for around six, seven years now. And in in the studio has an automation system, and he has also a virtual control of the uh, control surface of the forum. Now this he can control from his home with a virtual um, uh, the forum virtual uh, application. Another way for him to bring audio back and forth between his house and for, from his home to to the studio and into the console uh, are his um, his uh, audio codecs, and he is using. Uh, uh, the uh, audio codec Phoenix Studio and the Phoenix Venus to and Mercury to connect uh, with the studio and the the line inputs of the of the console. Another way for him to connect his microphone is using uh, soft phone apps uh, on his uh, cell phone, 
and uh, connect it with a correct interface, a, a professional microphone to the phone, and he can call up the codec in the studio. Another example of uh, <clears throat> how things uh, can be, be, be used. In, uh, originally, Radio Lee Jöping in the southwest of uh, Sweden, they acquired a, a virtual uh, license for their forum IP split console. Now, this uh, license wasn't meant to be used as a work from home tool, but uh, as a uh, studio tool, because at times where they don't have any uh, technician in the in the control room, they wanted to be able to control certain levels from, from uh, the virtual application in the studio. Now, uh, during this confinement and the, the, the recommendation uh, to stay at home, uh, the technicians and also the the, um, the DJs and the talent uh, uh, and radio voices uh, of, of this small local station are able to run the, the station from a home. They can run all the aspects of the of the uh, of the console from home, including the automation system and their uh, their audio matrix system. Another example of a, a customer, more more or less in the same line as the previous one, is uh, Radio Hala in London. It's a community station, uh, uh, first Anglo-Arabic uh, visual radio station. And they initially bought or acquired the virtual license to be able to control their studio and control room mixers from their OB band when they were doing outside uh, jobs. And now with the confinement they are, and the size of the station, it, it makes it difficult for them to go out and do OB operations. But it allows now the um, their operators and their talents to run the consoles from their homes and uh, with their remote connection of their microphones. There's a company in uh, New Hampshire as well in the US. And uh, this is also an old timer and a long time acquaintance of AEQ. And that's uh, Mr. Gary Savoy of the Merkwood Group. Um, Merkwood is taking care of a couple of uh, um, uh, college uh, radio stations that are pretty important in the area of Lebanon in in New Hampshire, and uh, they they are running um, the virtual since uh, 2014 or 2014. Uh, actually, this picture shows Gary uh, last uh, Monday, this Monday actually, and he was uh, arranging the feeds from uh, from the governor's press conference in Vermont to uh, New Hampshire at the two different colleges. So he was running two stations. One he was running on the on the uh, iPad and one he was running on the PC. So, um, uh, and that's uh, that's another good example of how, uh, how the uh, forum virtual application helps uh, people to, to connect their, uh, their station and be able to work from their, from their homes uh, uh, in these dire times. Uh, so all the journalists uh, here in Spain, I would say 99% of them, and I, I think it's pretty much the same in, in, in large parts of the world, <clears throat> they are now working at home. And the talents and anchors and the, the main presenters of the radio programs in different fringes of the, the network's uh, uh, programming, they are doing their their home. Uh, they're doing their programs from home and basically building home studios. Uh, the Copa network in in Spain, which is uh, probably the second largest network, private network in in Spain, they they have in round figures run. Well, they have over 200. The AEQ Phoenix Alio. Uh, Phoenix Alio is very uh, useful these times because it's uh, at the same time. A small portable mixer. It's a, a dual-channel audio codec. So uh, all our, uh, all these journalists and talents, they are doing the program from their homes, and they only need a mic or a headset, and uh, they connect with their headquarters in Madrid, and from there the the signals are uh, routed into the channels or into the consoles, and then out to the transmission links. Uh, there are good examples of this, and if you want to have a look on our uh, 
on our website and on our social uh, networks, you will be able to see uh, these uh, very nice examples of how uh, COPE is handling uh, their, uh, their radio programs uh, remotely from, from home. Uh, last but last, not least, in terms of codex and bringing mics uh, home uh, with you, uh, radio or Hills Radio in in uh, in Australia, they are using the um, Alio 3G 4G uh, connectivity with external uh, uh, 3G 4G routers. They are using these to connect <coughs> their uh, OB uh, OB units. Uh, uh, to the studios. Now, uh, it's an amazingly simple uh, plug-and-play operation to to them and according to them. And now, uh, when they have the confinement, they can they can hand the the, the Phoenix Alley over to the journalists, and they can can continue doing their interviews um, from home and, and doing their contributions from home. Okay. Now, how to handle this and to be able to handle this. We uh, we need to um, uh, connect uh, our uh, our home with a with a studio in a decent quality, and to do that, uh, we use audio codex. And uh, I have Sergio Sanchez here, as I explained to you, and Sergio will explain to us how we connect um, the uh, the audio codex uh, from uh, from our homes with the audio codex in in the studios. Thanks, Peter. Hi again. Now I'm going to show you how to take your microphone audio to the, to the studio through internet. Okay, this is a typical example where uh, you can see that uh, we are sending the audio using an audio audio product to the studio and taking the, the audio to the mixing console. Okay, in order to do this, we need an audio codec, IP audio codec. Uh, this unit uh, takes the analog signal uh, from the microphone, compresses compresses it and uh, encodes uh, the signal uh, in a format uh, able to travel through the internet, okay? You don't need a special uh, connection to do that. A regular ADCL or fiber home connection is more than enough for this. And, uh, okay, so um, uh, in this example, we are using Alio Decodec, which is very suitable uh, because it has, uh, apart from the decoding capabilities, it has an internal mixer that uh, make is, makes it uh, very uh, suitable to, to mix microphones on any other source, uh, other sources and uh, sending them to, to the studio. As you can see, we connect it to the router. The router is connected to internet, public internet. Okay, and, and as we make the call, the audio reaches the, the codec in the studio and it is connected, uh, its outputs are connected to the mixing uh, console of the studio. And of course, the connection is bidirectional, so any feedback or program feedback or coordination from the console can be sent back to the uh, audio codec at home, and uh, the signal can be listened uh, through the headphones connected to it. Okay, now we are going to see some more details about this uh, audio codec. This is the Phoenix Alio. As you can see, it has a front panel where you can control everything from uh, mixing uh, to uh, microphone sending, uh, uh, viewmeters, uh, dialing. You have a small screen for status uh, checking and uh, level adjustment, uh, and the output section for the headphones and the line output adjustments. Uh, at, the, at the rear of the unit, it has four XLR connector, connectors for the microphones. You can mix up to four microphones or three microphones and the stereo line input. The stereo, the stereo line input and output are located at the right of the unit, uh, depicted at the bottom of this figure. And also you have the headphone connectors, two stereo headphone connectors uh, for feedback, for return, okay? Uh, this is the unit we recommend for uh, the for home because it has the, the mixer incorporated and you don't need anything else. But uh, we need to uh, install another codec in the, in the studio, of course. Uh, this is the three. These are the three units we offer currently. Uh, the first one is Phoenix Mercury, the, the simple one. It's uh, it has a, a one channel. It's a bit, that is bidirectional, bidirectional and um, stereo. Venus 3, 
it has two uh, independent end channels that are also stereo and um, bidirectional, and it also features uh, Dante audio over IP connectivity for uh, local input and output. That is also compatible with uh, third manufacturers using AS67 uh, standard. And finally, we have Phoenix Stratos that is uh, similar to Venus 3, but it also has an ISDN interface for legacy connections and a front panel for uh, dialing control and small screen for status checking. Okay, now that we, uh, that we know uh, the codex, uh, we need to define how to make the connections. Okay, we have several modes. Uh, the most common one is proxy SIP. It is based on SIP protocol, a standard protocol, and relies on an external server. Uh, this server has the function to um, uh, make you forget about the uh, IP addresses and ports, uh, so all the units are registered uh, with names, and then you can dial simply using those names, and you don't need to, to remember IPs. <clears throat> direct, SIP, direct SIP is a variation of this uh, without requiring an external server, but uh, uh, on the other hand, you will need to remember the IPs, know the IPs and the, and the ports. It doesn't make too much sense because we have a, another mode. Uh, for example, we have also RTP, that is a, a standard real transfer protocol. And it, in its a more uh, basic form, it requires you to know not only the IP and, and port of the remote end, but it uh, also uh, needs you to, to make the call in both sense, in both directions, and you need to agree on the codex use. This can make the connection quite tricky, but in order to solve this, uh, AQ developed a set of tools called, called Smart RTP that is incorporated in our all of our codex. Uh, so in order to make an RTP call, you just need to know the remote and uh, IP and port, this is uh, usually the studio uh, public IP and open port. And then and the call is made uh, automatically in both directions and the codec is negotiated automatically. So uh, we will see an example later on, uh, just, to, just to check how easy it can, it can be. Uh, in, any case, uh, in any case, you have uh, all the details in application note six. Uh, that you can check and know uh, in order to, to, to know more about this. And in, I, I, it will also be available here at, at the end of the webinar to solve your questions. Now we are going to, to see an example of uh, how to control the, the codex remotely. You can do that. And this is also explained in that uh, application note. Now you are seeing the screen of a PC that is located in AQ headquarters. I am connecting to it from my home. Uh, using any desk, it's a standard uh, remote control tool, and um, it is running Control Phoenix. This is a control application we provide with all of our codecs. Uh, in this simple installation, we have added only two two codecs. Uh, the first one at the left is a Phoenix Alio, which is uh, some in gray. Okay, and um, uh, as you can see. Uh, we have a simple representation of it, so in the status of the channels and some simple call buttons, and, and that's it. At the right, we have another codec that is located in the internet. It's a Phoenix Studio. It is not there. It is an uh, internet in the cloud, let's say it. And this is the test unit we offer for our all, all of our customers just to make a, a test calls. Okay. Uh, of course, we can control everything in the codex. For example, for the audio, we can access its mixer, where you can see that we can adjust the microphone levels, okay, all of them. We can uh, control where to send the audio, for example, to program or to coordination. These are the two channels offered by audio. Uh, the second channel is optional, by the way. Okay. You can also control the, head, uh, the headphone return levels, what uh, we are listening to. Uh, at each headphone and everything. This is done in parallel with the uh, control panel at the top of the unit. Okay, we can even forbid some of these uh, control actions so the journalist in front of the unit uh, uh, can, is not able to do them. Okay, this is uh, optional, of course. 
Um, of course, we can also control other parameters uh, of the connection, like uh, the input mode, uh, the coding algorithm, the interface. We can select uh, RTP, proxy, like SIP, as we explained before, and all the details of the unit. Okay, and the same for the studio codec. Okay, the representation is a bit different, but it's uh, similar. You have the inputs with the gains, the input mode, analog digital, etc. The coding algorithm, the interface to make the call. You see that we have uh, ISDN here too. The output mode, etc. Okay, uh, but uh, how do we make uh, calls? Okay, in this example, we have prepared the first channels, both units, to make a proxy SIP calls, and the second channel to make a RTP calls using a smart RTP. To make a proxy SIP call, we just click on the call button, and we can directly type here the name of the studio unit, or we can use a, a, an entry from the from the call book store in the in the unit we prepared some uh, contacts before for example master channel one zip we select it just click on call and the call is made and automatically answered okay now we have a bidirectional uh, stereo connection uh, between uh, the units well now it's in g722 but you can select any other algorithm such as opus that is very well suited for this application okay uh, for rtp we do the same. You just click here. We just type the, I, the public IP and port of the studio, or use an already stored contact like this master channel two RTP. It has the IP and, and port already defined. Click it and call. Okay. As you can see, we only make the call here with the already um, selected algorithm, and the call is negotiated and returned. So now it's bidirectional and it is already established. Okay, so this is as simple as that. Uh, we can also see real-time meters for inputs and output of, of, of the units, of course. And the application allows for many more options like uh, call book management, uh, audio profile management, uh, a, a set of things that uh, maybe they are beyond the scope of this uh, webinar. In any case, I'm available for you for any questions uh, at the end of, uh, of it. Um, well, uh, I think that's it. Uh, Peter, you can uh, continue. I hope it was Thank you very useful. much, um, uh, Sergio. Thank you. Thank you Welcome. so much. Um, okay, so we will continue then with the um, with the elements. We have now brought, as we have explained, we have brought the, <clears throat> the microphones home with us. Um, through audio codex in this case, or they can, as we explained earlier as well, they can be soft firms. But uh, as, as I said uh, uh, earlier, the, one of the most important elements would be your automation and content management system, uh, because this is uh, basically your your uh, your, your concentrated uh, source of revenues. And uh, we can, <clears throat> with for example the Audio Plus, I'll show you uh, quickly how we. How we can handle that from from home. The Audio Plus is uh, an object-oriented uh, 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 automation system that handles uh, both uh, automatic or manually generated playlists, depending on on how we want to build them. We can uh, <clears throat> we can uh, prepare the playout modules and uh, what we call virtual machines and get them ready and loaded. Uh, we can edit all the audio tracks as well if we need be, if need be, and um, voiceovers, and we can also launch news or pre-recorded reports and stories, new stories that we have uh, stored in our in our uh, SQL uh, database uh, of the system. We can even manage all the live program, so we could trigger songs manually, and and, uh, and we can queue audio files manually uh, if necessary. Uh, just the same way as if you would be in the studio. Now, to, uh, the way to do that, the way to do that would be to to either have a um, a uh, an application <clears throat> at uh, uh, at home uh, on your computer uh, and with a very good uh, connection uh, to be able to access the database locally, 
or as uh, we are going to show here, through a uh, simple uh, VPN, uh, oh, sorry, or in this case, it's a, it's a remote desktop application. Now, uh, what, what this allows me to do is basically, if you look uh, to the left, we have our, our virtual machines or what we call virtual machines. These are actually our playout modules where we have all the, uh, the, uh, the different elements that we, we would maybe need to do cross by uh, cross fades um, and jump to next play and to automate the the uh, the playout. We can configure these virtual machines or playout modules. Uh, we can configure them to be either lists or they can be uh, configured as cards, uh, the old card uh, system. Uh, we can uh, record, of course, if we have uh, if we have the inputs uh, to our computer. And we can also do editing either using internal editor of the Audio Plus or using an external editor of our preference. We can uh, we can also handle, for example, all the um, all the uh, audio resources or object resources that we have here to the right, where we have um, audio files, text files. As I said, it's an object-oriented one, so we can run texts or any other objects. Our lists and uh, and uh, other stuff sorry we have a uh, i have a slow internet connection here so anyway uh, just, as i said i'm connected now with uh, with our uh, audio plus system that we have in our demo room in in uh, in our office uh, i can take for example this uh, particular uh, piece of item and i can edit it And I can edit the text, and for example, this could be a news uh, uh, a, a news uh, bulletin, and I could, for example, add a, a piece of audio here, and uh, and then uh, after the the last piece of the bulletin is read, I could add a, another audio as an outro uh, for for this news bulletin, and just save it. And it would be ready to be able to load on uh, the virtual player. Uh, once I want to trigger it, or I can even I could have it uh, on automatic uh, playout. When I trigger it, I just open the, uh, the run the text. I read the text. I come to the uh, to the audio file that is associated to the previous text. I just hit it, and uh, it should be playing. When I'm done with the audio, I continue reading the text, and then I do the the outro uh, audio, and basically that would be, for example, a, a short a news bulletin or a or a news uh, contribution. Okay, so uh, as I said, with a, a remote uh, desktop, we are able to uh, connect. Uh, easily uh, with our uh, with our automation system without any problem and uh, we can uh, uh, run uh, the all the features of our audio plus we can run through uh, a, a simple remote desktop connection okay i'm going back to the presentation now and i will introduce to you uh, roberto tijero uh, roberto will explain to us how we connect our virtual um, our virtual uh, consoles uh, at home. Our, instead of bringing the big bulky piece of equipment at home, to home, uh, we use the uh, uh, forum and capital and atrium virtual control modules. Uh, Roberto, please, the floor is yours. Hi, Peter. Hello, everybody. Well, I want to show you the AEQ solutions to bring home the the consoles, the mixers. Well, AQ um, have um, different families of consoles. Three of them, Capital Console uh, Forum, and a New Atrium family. These three, these three families has the possibility to have uh, a virtual control. How to do that? Well, uh, it's uh, using a virtual application. That application, it's like a virtual surface. It's, uh, 
uh, that that virtual application has the same functionalities the physical surface of our mixer and uh, we can install in, in different places or at home or uh, at the studio and control uh, remotely the our mixer okay this application it's possible to 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 run uh, on on windows or on ios okay this is uh well remarks that that application only works with uh, with aq consoles for that three families capital forum and atrium well um what do we need to do that well but we need to connect uh, the core of the of the console uh, in the studio to internet but to to keep the the security um, it's not a good idea to connect directly the the console the core of the console uh, to internet uh, we have two possibilities to do that one of them is to use a vpn a virtual private network in that case we can use um, install a, a software on the on the studio and then uh, connect remotely uh, from home and using maybe the VPN uh, tool in Windows or other tool. And in that case, we can install that virtual application at home. The other way is using a virtual desktop, like remote desktop, Windows, AnyDesk, TeamViewer, that kind of application. And we connect remotely from, uh, from home uh, to the studio. And the application, it's installed in a computer or a server in, inside the studio. In that case, we could have all other applications to control the studio uh, installing that server or that computer. And we connect home. We, need, uh, we don't need to install anything else in, in at home. Uh, only the application to remote uh, to the remote connection. Well, uh, here we could have um, an application. Uh, I'm going to show you the application. Well, I'm connecting now. Here you can see. The, that virtual application. This is the Capital Virtual. Is the software to control the AQ um, console. And I am uh, this application ins installed in, in the in the company. I'm at home. The console is uh, in the company in AQ. I'm at home. I am connecting uh, using any desk, and I control the surface uh, from home. Here we can see that we have the light signaling, like the on air signaling. Here we have other signals, uh, like in one fader, uh, it's uh, active the equalization, etc. I can go up and down the fader. I control uh, the surface like a physical surface. It's the same, the same thing. I can do in, in a physical surface of our console, we can do with that virtual application. Here we can see the different boom meters, program audition, that's the principal buses, but we have uh, four auxiliary uh, buses to control for the mixer, etc. Um, I can switch on and off the on air that. Uh, I switch off the, the on air that signal, uh, the boom meters go down. I can route over here, that controls here. I can route that signal uh, for the different buses to go to the program, to on air signal, etc. I can select uh, one of the signal and modify the different parameters like gain, phase, uh, balance, or process on that uh, on that signal uh, like activate a compressor noise gate activate or disactivate of course and i can enter in that parameter to modify in real time that parameter like 
uh, modifying maybe the frequency, the, the quality of the filter, etc. In maybe in an equalization or loss, um, low pass, high pass filters, etc. I deselect that. And I can see all the all the surface. And here we have, of course, uh, the control, the monitoring control. In that case, is it possible to send the control monitoring over um, over a return channel of an audio codec to check? at home using that audio codec, uh, the, the monitoring of the console. Here we have the 20 keys, uh, the 20 programmable keys. It's possible to maybe to control uh, telephone hybrid, the GBI, GBO, the different uh, types of queue, et cetera. It's like the same. Well, to configure that application, it's very easy. In, in that part here, pressing that part, we go to, to the device key over here. And we only need to put here the IP address of our console. It's only one. Uh, in that case, we, we have a connection, the virtual, the virtual capital, that software, to the console and we have all the control. In case you want to, to trial, if you have an AEQ console and you want to trial that application for 30 days, here in that button, in trial button, press to the keypad and we have uh, a serial here. Well, copy it and send it to us and we send you the, the key to open the trial period. And this is, the control of our console using a virtual software. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Roberto. Uh, we are now uh, going back uh, to um, how we bring our phone systems uh, to um, to uh, home. Uh, the, uh, the uh, only thing I need to do now is uh, to introduce to you Antonio Perez, who is our uh, sales manager for Asia Pacific, and he will explain to you the uh, the details or the, the, the or he will go, a, go do a, a run through of how to bring the phone lines uh, not not really home, but you bring the phone capability or phone operation capability to to your home or from a remote location. Thank you, Antonio. Thank you, Peter. Uh, good afternoon, good evening to all our colleagues and friends in Asia. Just uh, running Asia, so just give me one second just to thank uh, the people from China, Taiwan, Indonesia, India, Iran, Thailand, and many places around Asia which they are enjoying our presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you for being with us in these hard moments and these hard days, and uh, we will overcome all together, we will overcome these problems. So, as Peter told you, um, and my colleagues, they have been explaining you, radio is about um, programming, music, news, sports, and people, people, audiences who come by the phone and by other means, but typically from the phone, the telephone, the telephone and the programs uh, has been in radio since ever, in the beginning. So we are going to try to give you a couple of uh, a few examples about uh, how to maintain that uh, audience on air at attending the programs uh, while we have to stay at home. So, um, for instance, um, if you want to take with you one um, one telephone line. I mean, one telephone, not the line, but if you want to take with you home the controlling of the line, of the telephone line for the station, we can do it in a very simple and uh, simple way. For instance, um, you used to have, or we have analog lines in many places around the world. If that line you converted into IP, in that moment you have the, the option and the ability to switch that audio line over the internet to take it 
uh, or to give the control to an operator, a talent working from home, and this person from home that can be having the console, can be having the, the codec for going on air, can be having the automation system on the PC, whatever. They can also have the audio from the, the, from the telephone for the screening and they can screen the calls the same as if they were in the office and then switch to the other router, which is only a kind of IP instruction and through the gateway, which is the box that we all have at home for fiber or ADSL connections, going finally to the hybrid and to the console. So this is a easy solution where you have the possibility to have an IP line that you can ask uh, your provider to switch home and keep on using from home. If we want to make it a little bit more complicated, we can still having uh, the same connectivity of the IP line going home and from home you can have another screeners as the typical screeners in the station because the line can be switched to any device that is inside or outside the station because it's the same IP technology that is allowing us to have this seminar today with the equipment in AEQ with the people in Madrid in different places and you are in Asia anywhere. So finally, we run all this through the routers and the IP technology, gateway, hybrid, and to the console as usual. So this is a solution that you can implement easily if you have a, an IP line uh, with no extra cost, let's say just only the setup. If we want something a little bit more elaborated, then we need to uh, go into something, I mean, more elaborated to operate in the station and outside the station remotely, then we need to go into something more uh, sophisticated and more complete, something that is going to give you more options. And this is where it comes uh, AEQ offering you a Systel, the Systel IP. Systel is the third generation of um, phoning systems from AEQ. AEQ started on the telephone hybrids, on the analog telephone hybrids, and then we migrated in the 90s as uh, to the digital telephone hybrids, the telephone the equipment that was able to take telephone lines and process on digital domain for um, for audio, okay? So from the beginning, uh, we put together a lot of telephone hybrids and we made Systel 3000. Systel 3000 was developed in the 90s. It was able to put eight people on air all together. And then uh, beginning the 21st century, uh, Sorry, it's the telephone. This is live. So I have the telephones. An incoming call. Sorry. So then I was telling you Sister 3000, then uh, Sister 3000, then it came Sister 6000, which was based on ISDN lines. And the last 10 years we have developed Sister IP. Sister IP is the device that is able to receive the calls from IP devices, also from analog devices from ISDN, because any any phone signal can be converted into data and the data can be handled by Systel IP. So with the Systel IP that you see is a black box that is able to receive up to 16 phone lines, then uh, you need to have an, a specific controller, somehow a specific controller. This is the Systel set. Systel set is the specific controller which is handling uh, the telephone audio, the call screening audio from the callers, and you have also the control. But also you can have another interface that is a PC interface that is more elaborated, that is giving you more options uh, for queuing, call screening, for a lot of uh, facilities, and have an, just a simple IP phone from Cisco, from Avaya, from any manufacturer something very simple. So this could be the solution that easily you could take home with you just to for doing color screening from home. The idea is the following that you see in this diagram. Uh, we have the system in the station that is receiving the telephone calls uh, from your IP providers or from your analog provider for whatever. So we put the IP calls here in the voice over IP and we have our screeners at home for instance, imagine here we are having two screeners, two persons preparing the show 
or doing call screening before going on air or with the IP codecs, the console, all this integration of devices that they have explained you today here. Um, so we could set up just a telephone set, the same as it, if it were in the station, the system setup, system set plus, or a PC with an IP phone. I mean, an IP phone is something that you can buy on Amazon, you can buy on the internet, you can buy uh, if the warehouse or if the electronic store next to your house is open, you can buy the IP phone. A PC is something we have at home and we can just set up. Set up and suddenly we could be controlling the IP, the system IP, we could be controlling the system IP from home. I'm going to just tell you very, uh, very, in a very, to explain you how this is done in a very simple way. Uh, this is the system uh, that we have uh, that we have in the station. So imagine that today I need to change the parameters. I need to work, start working from home because suddenly you're blocked and you cannot go to the office and you need to work from home today because you have your IP codec, because you have your console control, you have the other, and I need to control also the mobile, the phones, the callings from the office from home. So I just go into the voice over IP and in this area I just enter the IP address of where I am staying, which is my home. And then I send the, this uh, configuration and then when I uh, log in, let's see if I can control this. Hmm. Just one second. I am controlling this device from uh, from which is in the office, which is in AQ. So I'm logging from home. You see, I put my password, I log in, then I choose which is my studio. As you see there, which is the program, the template I'm going to use, ten lines, and which is the intercom that I'm going to use. The intercom obviously is going to be an IP telephone that I have at my home. So when I choose, then I log in and I have my uh, telephone interface where I can make and receive calls. Okay. So here I have my one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine and ten lines, which is what I chosen. And working from home, I can uh, make and receive calls. On this interface, I can elaborate also uh, legends for my colleagues which are screening in the office. So I can say this is uh, John from Delhi. Oh, here I have an incoming call that I can uh, listen. I can answer the same as if I were on the station. Then I bring it, I have it on my handset. I can give it a name. This is John. This is John calling from. Delhi, just from our friends in India. Okay, and I can have the call ready and then I put it on hold. I can ch check the levels of the caller. So as you can see, I can do the operation as a like if I were in the office, right? Fine. And then we go to the Go back to the presentation, sorry. So, as you saw from here, now in this moment in, in my home, I can control the system IP. I have my PC, who I am controlling the, by any desk. And this is basically the way we have tried to explain you how to bring the radio station home, or how to bring some pieces of the radio station home with you. The, the console, the codex, the automation now the telephones and i think this is all by now so please peter rescue me and take control of the thank you no need to rescue you. i think you you handle it uh, quite well actually so uh, anyway the um there we go okay so right we we've reached the end uh, of our uh, webinar but um, 
Well, I know that uh, and that I said at the beginning we wanted you guys to to ask some questions, and if you and you have asked some questions uh, during the session, so I'm going to go through a few of them. I, if we can't answer all of them, we will answer all of them, um, in not online, but uh, sending you uh, an email uh, reply to your question. But we we will do a few of them um, now. And we had a question here from from Mark. And uh, the question is uh, for Sergio, and it's basically how many units can we control simultaneously using uh, the Phoenix control software? Sergio, can you Hi, uh, answer that one? Thank you, Peter. Uh, okay, uh, Control Phoenix uh, can control um, virtually unlimited number of uh, codecs, but uh, the standard version that comes for free with the, with each codec can control up to two. Uh, units simultaneously. So, if you only have a link with two units, it's okay for you. If you have a pool of uh, a larger pool of uh, units, then you may need the registered version that uh, has uh, some cost. The, the sales people can, can can tell you. All right. Thank you, Sergio. Um, there's another one here from Mr. Tuk. Um, I hope I pronounced the name correctly now. And he's asking if there is a demo license for the uh, Audio Plus. Um, I can answer that. And yes, there is. Um, what you need to do is to contact your your uh, uh, sales representative or your distributor and dealer and provide your your name and, uh, and your interest. And we will make uh, that license available to you with all the instructions with regards to uh, equipment requirements and uh, and, uh, and other prerequisites uh, uh, that you need to comply with. Then, so I hope that answers your question. And then from Omar, uh, and this is also for you, Sergio, and it's concerning the algorithms of what we consider the best algorithm for remote codec connections. Well, Sergio, okay, well, uh, technically the best suite uh, algorithm for uh, almost any application currently is Opus because it has a variety of, uh, of uh, variations that cover from voice with very low bit rate to a stereo music with a not very high bit rate, less than 200 kilobits per second. In any case, uh, it also has a very low delay, so it's suitable for communications. And it's uh, nowadays it's very compatible with third-party uh, codecs. So in a nutshell, Opus should be okay for you. Okay, good. Thank you. Uh, what else do we have here? Yeah, from uh, from Mr. Anis. Um, he's asking us, um, uh, how can you use this remote connection also for technical uh, support, remote support? Uh, Roberto, this is, I think this this is for you. Uh, I mean, I think we we could all answer it, but I think it's it's good if you answer that question. Yeah, well, the remote connection, it's um, for us, it's, uh, it's the better way to, to have the support because our technical can, uh, can do or can uh, modify anything in, in the equipment remotely and it's very quickly and easy to use. Uh, for us, it's the, the better way to, to have the, the support. It's um, a good tool. Mm -hmm. Very good. Okay, um, Mr. Abdallah uh, is asking us, uh, this is for you, Antonio, uh, the system set plus, can we use that in parallel uh, with uh, the, the software application? Is it possible to use those together? Yeah. Um, yes, of course. Um, I suppose it's asking me if you have uh, simultaneous users uh, working together. Uh, yes. You can have as many as as required. I think on the small controller is limited to four or five devices working together. Maybe the technical people they know better than me. But on the from the PC you can have as many users as you want working all together. That's the idea of the system to have many workers, many producers, screeners, uh, operators working together. And this is why you have the chat boxes where you can enter the test names, labels, all that, to coordinate uh, all the show. I hope this is the answer. I, I hope this is the, this is what the client, 
what I, no, were, I, think I think I was looking for. I think it's clear. Thank you, Antonio. Okay, then what else do we have here? We have a question from Mr. AK or AK. And he's basically asking us, uh, I think this goes to you, Sergio. He's asking us for what would be the bandwidth uh, required to be able to take um, the, uh, the uh, talent uh, connection uh, to his home, you know, for his microphone, I assume that the question is. Okay, uh, it all depends on the, uh, the quality of the, of the coding algorithm. Uh, as I recommended before, if you use Opus uh, with a typical rate of, say, 128 kilobits per second, uh, then uh, with that code, uh, with that coding, you can uh, send a stereo CD quality audio. Uh, okay, we always recommend like twice the nominal bit rate just to be on the safe side. So with less than 250 uh, kilobits per second, that is available even uh, with mobile connections worldwide, it, uh, you, are, you are set. It's more than enough. Very good. Thank you, uh, Sergio. I, I believe that this one, the next one is also for you, actually, because it's uh, concerning an, an SDL, a studio transmitter link. Mm -hmm. um, do we, uh, it's from uh, the, the person who's asking is Dennis. Uh, um, what, what, what options do we have? To connect uh, studio to transmitter links or to create studio transmitter links. Okay, this is a very common application also with our codex. Uh, usually, uh, the studio the studio has rack mount units like the three we presented before, like Mercury, Venus, or Stratos. And uh, at the transmitter, typically you only need one channel, so you can go with a Mercury or a Venus if you want with two channels. Uh, and um, you can still use Opul, Opus for, for sending the audio, or if your connection allows for that, you can even use PCM, that is a linear and compressed audio, but you require like a one and a half megabits per second or something like that to send that. So it depends mm -hmm. on the link you have. Some customers use radio links, and in that case, I would go for the Opus. Uh, coding algorithm. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Sergio. Uh, Antonio, this one's for you. It's from, uh, it's a question by, uh, made by Mr. Kuma. Uh, do we have anything smaller than system IP16? Uh, we don't, uh, he apparently doesn't need all the 16 uh, calls or 16 extensions. Do we have anything smaller? Yeah, good question. Um, yeah, we have smaller versions uh, we have a version which is starting with uh, four lines and we have another version which is uh, on 12 lines and finally the top a uh, premium version which is on 16 lines with uh, audio over ip dante as67 facilities so yes we can start with something more with all the features in terms of control and the same interface it's very easy to use mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, and then there's a there's a question here as well from <coughs> Linda or Miss Linda. Yeah, and she's asking she's asking us, uh, Antonio. You can probably answer this one as well. She's asking us uh, uh, what would be uh, the price for for a, a couple of um, Mercury's. I suppose to create an STL or price to create a, for a couple link. of Mercury's. Uh, well, in, in euros, a couple of mercuries you can make it in uh, below 2,000 euros, below 2,000 US dollars. Mm -hmm. You can set up a uh, STL that uh, maybe uh, my colleague Sergio he can explain you much better. With all the functionalities, all the all the functionalities that you need to operate uh, this type of STLs with the buffering, with the recovery functions, recalling, reloading, all these functions. And you don't need to make it too complicated. You don't need to multiply multiply the data, multiply the streaming, make strange mm -hmm. artifacts because Opus is good enough, and is uh, our experience is that give us is it, not to make it more and more complicated. The STL, 
but is to keep the bandwidth in the right uh, level, not to be overspending and overloading mm -hmm. the internet with information that is redundant and you don't need. Just put the parameters. And Sergio, if you have any interest about all this, Sergio can give you much better information about uh, how to set up okay. an SDL. Super, thank you. Uh, I, the, we touched this actually, Roberto, this one's for you. It's, uh, Mr. Chang is asking if he, if it's, what would be the better choice to bring the capital mixer home with him or to uh, use it remotely located in the studio? Well, <laughs> depends depends on the depends on the use. Well, uh, for me, it's easier to to have the application on the studio, uh, the virtual the virtual control application in the studio, and connect with any desk or that kind of tool. Because for me, it's easier and it's the you have the, the same uh, security as a VPN. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, you. Uh, I, I, I would, I would refrain from bringing mixers home with us because we would have to bring a lot of infrastructure home with us as well. Uh, well, if you want to to take your uh, the console at home, it's uh, a, a bit difficult. <laughs> yes. Well, so, in that case, if you want to to bring uh, the physical console at home, you can connect uh, using the audio codec, like Sergio was speaking about it and send the program to the studio using a, an audio codec maybe with opus or something like that the other way is the physical console in the studio and control virtually sure so. okay um all right we i mean this is dragging out a little bit we we have to put an end to the webinar at some point and we we thank you for all your questions there's been Plenty of them, and there are many more, of course, but we, we, we just don't have time to answer all of them uh, here and now. So we, but we will answer all the questions that you had. Uh, we will do so privately since you, when you registered, you gave us our, uh, your uh, email addresses. Now, uh, just for the housekeeping and before we say goodbye, um, please make sure, please make sure uh, that you, um, you, you answer this inquiry that I mentioned at the beginning of the webinar that will may, be made available to all of you when, when we close down the, uh, the session. So uh, again, um, thank you all. Thank you everyone for connecting to, to this webinar today and uh, your Excellent. kind attention. And we, we, uh, we also, I would also like to thank uh, the, the people that have been accompanying me today and uh, hope to see you soon again next uh, webinar here at AEQ. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. much. Thank you very much.